Hello everyone, welcome to my channel and uh, in this video we're going to talk about a topic that maybe isn't quite understood um, and it's something that normally isn't related to uh, Japanese martial arts and that is uh, we're going to talk about why Sanshin Kata and Tenshu Kata which are the forms, the sequences, the patterns in uh, Goju Ryu Karate and some other styles of Karate are actually Qigong forms and uh, if, if you don't know what Qigong is, I'll also explain what that is as we go along. So I'm going to make an argument for why the katas are secretly Qigong sequences. Um, and I'm going to use some scientific evidence uh, to back up uh, why qi, meaning energy, is real um, in, a, in a realistic sense, not, not in the mystical, magical sense. But I think before we talk about it in detail, we need to understand what Qigong is. So various sources, uh, they all tend to define Qi as vital energy or uh, life force and um, is normally connected to traditional Chinese medicine concepts, which are really embedded deep in Chinese culture. Um, the Chinese character for Qi actually is uh, the symbols for rice and steam which you'll see here on the screen to, uh, briefly. Uh, this combination describes the nature of qi as a transformative nature, similar to sort of uh, transform, uh, transformation or transference of heat energy. So this relates to the law of conservation of energy. So that is something that was formulated between 1842 and 1847 by a Julius Robert von Mayer as well as other colleagues of his in that day um, when they were attempting to understand energy in all its forms. And what they said was, energy cannot be created or destroyed, it can only be transformed. Which makes a lot of sense when, you, when you're really talking about biological energy in the body. Um, the Chinese character for Gong, so again we're going back to the meaning, the definition of Qi Gong, the character for Gong uh, means something like work or craft, uh, skill over time. Therefore, Qigong together means energy work or practicing energy uh, development in the body. Okay, so how do we work on cultivating energy? Many people ask that sort of question um, because people often just don't understand it. So I'm going to sort of delve into the mechanisms of that. Well, I personally think myself and others might hypothesize that qi is actually it's simply the efficient flow of blood around the body carrying you know oxygen molecules ions and other nutrients uh, from what we consume what we eat to like the organs of the body into the tissues of the body so we can you know maintain a healthy uh, bodily functions and a balance that's essentially what we're looking for but in order to find complete balance in the body, we have to kind of work on two sides of things. So we have the breathing side and the movement side, right? So breathing tends to be the primary focus in health practices like Qigong and Tai Chi. Um, but it's, of course, you know, essential for physical performance in martial arts. You know, like if you don't breathe right, you can't perform. I mean, that's just common sense, you know. But in order for us to develop that sort of perfect balance of energy in the body, um, we have to have more movement. We have to have a healthy blood pressure because if we have bad circulation or other health problems, um, you know, due to like sedentary lifestyles and, and things like that, then it doesn't matter how much energy we can cons we consume and try to develop in, in ourselves and through our breathing practices. It's, you know, you're going to struggle to find that balance. So if we look at Sanshin and Tenshu Kata, like these, these practices involve purposeful breathing alongside physical movements and you tend to switch between states of muscular tension and relaxation um, so therefore like you know sanction and tensho kata they embody the principles of qigong when you when you really look at what qigong is and then you apply it to what you're seeing in japanese martial arts because they they are physical practices you know like they, they can be more precisely characterized i guess as um in Chinese, you've got the term ne gong, which essentially just means internal work. So gong is like work, craft, practice, and then ne is internal. 
So it's still a form of Qigong, but it's more practiced with um, an external intention, meaning that you're using it for the purpose of uh, martial arts as opposed to just for health practices. So the, the focus of the Sanshin Intensho in, the, in terms of Qigong is in the intention and the breathing behind the movement. And this aids you in your bodily structure. So then when you can use it in martial arts in a practical way. So I want to talk a little bit about um, bioelectricity and blood pH. So a lot of people don't talk about Qi in this way because Chinese medical practices in the past, um, they didn't have the knowledge that we have about, about the body. So they had to use terminology that was more to do with uh, stuff they could see physically themselves rather than the stuff we can't see in the body. So bioelectricity in humans, it, tend, it refers to the electrical processes that occur in the brain and other organs. So the, these, these processes involve like the diffusion and exchange of um, sort of like positive ions, uh, like, you know, like sodium, potassium, calcium, all these things that we talk about when we're thinking about taking new, uh, supplements and, and whatnot. These um, ions allow the signals of the body, the bioelectricity, to actually travel between the cells and the organs right so that's one aspect of it so you could say that bioelectricity is one half of the chi equation the energy equation the other half is something called blood ph um, so we're talking about the acidity in the blood so blood ph tends to refer to the acidity level of the blood which is you know it's in a constant state of flux you know it can be like it can be either balanced and maintained at one point or depending on what you eat and how you feel in certain processes of the body, it can be different, right? So the scale of pH, blood pH, tends to be from 0 to 14. And a healthy level is around 7. And anything below 7 is considered uh, acidic, so the blood is more acidic. And anything above 7 is considered more alkaline. Um, the two main organs, which is, this, this is the interesting part, the two main organs uh, that actually keep your pH in balance are actually the lungs and the kidneys. It's interesting because if the two main organs that control pH in the body are the lungs and the kidneys, one of those organs we have voluntary somatic control of. So we can control how much oxygen we take in and how much carbon dioxide we expel. We have control over that. So we can actually regulate our blood pH with breathing techniques uh, found in Sanshin and Tensho, you know, in theory, because we are consuming more oxygen um, and expelling more CO2 than you would normally do on a daily basis, right? So to kind of uh, simplify uh, everything for you guys, because this might have confused the hell out of you, but uh, to simplify it for like practically for us martial artists, what I'm saying is, is that if blood pH is not in balance and uh, circulation is restricted in the body, maybe due to high blood pressure and other issues, bioelectrical signals between cells are dampened and you might experience negative symptoms such as sleepiness, fatigue and headaches, digestive issues, confusion, nausea and, you know, a general just lack of physical performance and even breathing difficulties, you know, and all of these can be connected to bad mental health as well and can sometimes be confused. Um, a lot of people sometimes think that they have um, their mental health isn't good, but actually it might be that the physiology isn't functioning right, which is causing the bad mental health in the first place, right? So what this tells you is that essentially bioelectricity and pH are the physical manifestations of qi and how the qi flows through the body. Um, and therefore, sort of, you know, sanction and tensho are technically the tools to help help us keep in our internal systems in balance. Um, if we feel healthy, we'll, you know, we'll perform well physically and to our full potential. And we can't dispute the, you know, the, the history and the uh, practical use of qigong because it's been used for thousands of years in china and chinese medicine uh, as a tool um, in exactly the same way because the chinese figured out a long time ago that breathing had a massive impact on our physical and mental well-being 
It's actually only in the last few hundred years of Western medical exploration that, that we can actually describe and measure the internal workings and effects of Qigong and other practices. So anyway guys, I hope I've made a good argument uh, to validate um, my hypothesis that Sanshin Kata and Tensho Kata are in fact forms of Qigong in Japanese martial arts. I've used some scientific evidence to sort of um, debunk and explain exactly what Qi might be uh, from a Western perspective. Um, and I think it helps to understand it in a, in a Western uh, perspective because if we understand that it's to do with the function of the organs in the body and um, imbalances and things that we might need in our in our daily life, maybe we need more supplements, maybe we need uh, to change our breathing patterns and things like that, we we can look at that and say, yes, uh, I'm, I'm lacking this, I, I need more of this, I need less of that. And we can then use Sanshin and Tensho Kata, not only for a practical fighting sense, but also for our own energy cultivation. So anyway, thank you guys for watching this video and I'll be releasing another one shortly related to this one and I'll see you on the next video.